This week, I made a terrible mistake and we lost $4,000. Poof, gone, into thin air. Well, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. It all started last week. Would you look at this? We are out of boards, again. It's like every time I turn around, we're out of boards and I need to build more boards. Isn't that what you signed up for when you started this business? Well, yeah, but I don't wanna be building boards all the time for the rest of my life. So if you don't wanna build boards all the time, why don't you just hire somebody else to build them for you? Or better yet, buy the boards from somebody else and ship them out. <sighs> We're not making that many boards quite yet. I'd want to, but right now it's still just up to me to keep it stocked. So why can't you just suck it up and go build boards if it's not all that many? <sighs> I guess I can but I'm gonna make the biggest batch of cutting boards I've ever made. I've never made this many cutting boards before and I've never made this many in just a week. If I don't get all 100 boards built by the end of the week, we're not gonna have enough boards for our regular customers while I'm busy building all of the boards for the Christmas customers. Look at all this maple. One thing I did differently this time was I broke the lumber down into 18 inch chunks, but I eliminated the split ends of the boards before I made my first 18 inch block. But now that I cut off the first three to five inches of each board, I get rid of 90% of all the cracks. That means that this is gonna save me a ton of time and a ton of waste later down the road, even though it seems kind of wasteful up front. So once I had all this lumber cut down, I uh, did a little quick math and determined that all of this lumber would make 138 cutting boards, give or take a few. This was the biggest batch of lumber that I have ever processed at one time. But anyway, the 138 boards this lumber should make should last us around eight weeks, but at the rate Jenny's been selling boards, uh, it might be a lot less. Yes, I know I'm wearing gloves. It's a hotly debated topic whether you should use gloves when you're woodworking, but it's my personal decision to accept the risk because I feel safer knowing I have more control with the grippy gloves. But this is where we ran into a big problem. Somehow, the bandsaw wasted a ton of cherry lumber. Somehow, someway, I was cutting strips much wider than I needed to. The maple was fine, those were the right dimensions, but somehow the cherry boards were much wider than the maple. I did notice that I was throwing more cherry strips into the scrap bucket than I was expecting to, but I really didn't think anything of it. I didn't stop to measure. I just assumed that because the fence was still on the sharpie mark that I had for an inch and a quarter, that everything was going fine. I still don't know what happened with the bandsaw. Those of you that are bandsaw specialists, let me know what you think happened happened in the comments. But now, when I go to glue all these boards up, the cherry strips are gonna be much thicker than the maple strips, which is fine. I just have to plane it a little bit more, but I lose so much material. That extra quarter inch on every single cherry strip really adds up. I'm gonna spend more time planing, I'm gonna have more waste, and I'm gonna have a lower yield at the end of the batch. I would have to wait to the end of the whole batch to see how many boards I had lost, but I knew it was gonna be a lot.
need more color. So this is our new cart. It's a nice pop of color. And by the magic of video editing, all of a sudden I have two of them now. I like it. It's very pretty. You like the color? I do. We do need some more color in here. It was time to glue up the strips into cutting boards. And this is where I was able to make up a little bit for some of the bandsaw's mistake. See, I've been thinking about buying a $1,500 glue machine. I was just so sick and tired of using the glue bottle and then the ink roller to spread the glue out. It was really inefficient, took a lot of time. And then I found this guy. Our buddy Austin in the stud stack recommended this to us. It's a glue roller. So you pour glue into the, the hopper up here and this foam roller spreads the glue out on tabletops, on cutting board strips, whatever you need it to. And this thing works amazing. What used to take me three minutes per board now took me about 10 seconds. That's not an exaggeration. If you're enjoying this video, would you hate me if I asked you to hit the like button? It really helps us to know what type of content you guys enjoy best when we know what you like. So hit the like button. Thanks so much. This is one of those clutch moments where I'm learning from someone else's mistake. Austin told me he was about to buy the same glue machine I was looking at, but this little $30 tool from Amazon did 90% of the job for less than 1% of the cost. And learning from other people's mistakes is the whole goal of the stud stack. We share everything we've learned with the other business owners and they share what they're learning too. It helps us all make money much faster than we could if we were just learning by ourselves in our basement all alone. Or even worse, having to sort through all the contradicting opinions in the free groups on Line. A lot of the guys in the free groups have never sold a single thing. If you want to grow your business faster and you want to collaborate with the other friends and specialists in the maker community that are running a business, the stud stack is the best place to be. Whether you've made a thousand sales or you've dreamed of selling your work a thousand times, there's always something you can learn in the stud stack. Head to studstack.net to learn more.
All right, so let's dive into the math on this nasty mistake I made in these boards. All in all, this batch, I made 109 boards instead of the 138 that I was expecting. So I'll save you the math, but from the hardwood dealer to our customer's doorstep, our boards have an all-in cost of $56.13 each. So those 138 boards would have cost us a total of $7,645.94 to produce. And they would bring in $17,250 in revenue. However, the 109 boards that we ended up making actually cost us $7,745.94. The math is different because of the labor hours, but they're only gonna bring in $13,625 in revenue. That means that 138 boards would have given us $9,604 in profit, but instead we're only gonna get $5,879.06 with the 109 boards in profit. All of that math, it just says that we made a $3,724 mistake. Almost $4,000 mistake. All I would have had to do is just take an extra moment and inspect my work a little bit more carefully after the first cut, and we could have made a lot more money on this batch of wood. But you know what? I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. It's okay. If I didn't wanna fail, I would have never started a business. Failure is the price of entry to learning. I had so much fun building these boards, and I know I can do it better next time. 109 cutting boards in less than a week. Oh man, that was fun. Man, with each batch of boards, I learned so much about how to do it faster and quicker and more efficient the next time. This time I screwed up. There were a couple of problems, but we're gonna fix it on the next batch. And the next batch is gonna be even bigger because I gotta build 300 cutting boards for holiday gifts and then 100 charcuterie boards for holiday gifts. Boy, have I got my work cut out for me. Thank you so much for watching and learning with me. I can't wait to share with you what I learned from building these boards. I'll see you on the next one.